uh, another reminder that you are still on the wall, court. So the proceedings continue. Over to you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, lead Council, are you set? Can we proceed? Yes, Chairperson. Thank you. I'll hand over to Mr. Gomez, who was dealing or who was conducting the examination of the witness. Yes, it's clear. Thank you so much, um, Madam Chairperson and the Commissioners. Um, it is good to have you back, Honorable Pierce. We just um, proceed um, with the with the audit um, report um, in some of the areas that have been highlighted um, by the auditor in just um, two areas, two area council, um, Basse, and also Mansa Congo, lower river region. So we can discuss some few issues therein, and then proceed to other um, matters for the day. Um, let me refer you again um, to the findings of the auditor as per the audit report dated the 8th day of October, 2021. Um, for the periods of 1st January 2019 to 31st December 2019 in relation to Lower River Region, Mansa Congo area. Now, uh, the auditor has ha highlighted very um, key issues, one of which is that there were no balance sheets so that the, the financial position of the, of the area council would not have been known at the time. Um, when they subjected the area for auditing. I'm not sure whether this subsequently came to your knowledge. Yes. Right. Um, so what, what, what comments do you have in relation to that? Yes, um, uh, just like other observations uh, in the councils, I, I know this might not be specific to Mansakongo area councils. Um, uh, other councils suffer the same or have the same queries um, uh, against them in terms of their balance sheets. And uh, I, I, as I said earlier, the, the focus of the ministry at the time was to do the administrative bit, that is to bring this thing to the attention of the uh, council in question, but we have not gone uh, other step by coming up with um, a stream um, uh, remedial issues by referring some of these matters to for other bodies to um, uh, take care of it. Yes, and so um, this same area council, um, because of the irregularities in relation to the uh, their financial statements and financial accounting or whatsoever, you will see that um, it has also been highlighted on uh, page 16 of the report that. Um, as the, in fact, the, I will read from the, the report itself. Review of a sample of payment vouchers re revealed that several payments were effected with the authorization of only the CEO. You realize that um, he, will, he will authorize, he will be the single soul or the sole um, person in relation to making decisions or determination in relation to financial matters at this level. I'm not sure whether this uh, as well is to your knowledge. Yes, this, this also, uh, as per the audit query, came to our attention. And uh, just like I said before, the same um, uh, measures were taken. Very well. Um, I will also go to page 17 of the finance as well. There were also payments made or raised without vouchers being raised. And um, the implication therein is that payments raised without vouchers are an indication of poor control over expenditure, and the payment in question may not be appropriately authorized. So again, another very serious 
um, matter being raised again by the auditor in relation to having an individual um, having exclusive control, exclusive direction over the, the financial uh, matters of an area council, and therefore you will agree that is a very high risk um, for fraudulent um, practices, misrepresentation of, 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 of finances, and which perhaps, um, if at all um, fraud can be established, maybe um, it, it has happened over a long period of time without it, it being noticed. What is your reaction to that? Yes, um, uh, this is another finding which is um, uh, almost synonymous to all the councils as well. And um, uh, only administrative measures were taken, not beyond that. Um, Honorable Piers, again, um, at page 18, the data of finance um, GTRs against the main cash book revealed an amount of $27,000 $27,800 not posted in the main cash book. Are you aware of this? Yes. Uh, this particular findings, non-posting of um, uh, payments has prompted the, the ministry to advise councils to go for automated way of receiving um, uh, these revenues so that um, uh, there will be some control in terms of what has been received. And I believe um, uh, this was done in Brikama as well as Basse, where auditors, when they collect at real time, sorry, uh, the collectors, when they collect at real time, the CEO will know how much a particular collector collected. And when you log it into the account, he expects to receive uh, 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 an alert amounting to the same amount. And then we have um, uh, administratively dealt with issues where collection and lodging um, uh, are different. And then the, the, the CEO will first contact the collector in question that you collected $20. I've seen the alert I received is $15. Why is the $5? So this has helped us a lot to address um, uh, this problem of um, uh, collectors collecting and not lodging the amount into the, um, uh, the account. And we urge all other councils to have that system in place so that this will help them to have that control over. But even in Basse, uh, we've realized during our tour with the minister We've realized that there were a lot of resistance to this system. To an extent that, one, the machines, as of now we are dealing with one of the issues, somebody was hiding one of the machines for a long time, and now the council realized that he was deliberately hiding this machine to incapacitate the council's ability to collect with the machine. Secondly, the Alcalos, when we went around with the minister, the Alcalos complained to us that they have collected on behalf of the council money with them, and these collectors are refusing to come and collect this money from them. Some of them for six months, some of them for um, uh, eight months, some of them like two years, I have this money. We just advise them because it is just to, 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 to indicate that the system put in place is not efficient, that's why the revenue has not improved. Because um, the system was supposed to improve the revenue, which was started being seen. And that would have um, uh, somehow indicated to management that we need to continue on this process. But some of the people actually dealing with this revenue collection um, uh, resist um, uh, some of this. If I may give you an example also, the CEO in Basse, on his first assignment in Basse, uh, decided to disguise, to go to the revenue office, when nobody knew him yet. And then just sat down in the office and realized that the revenue collected was actually divided into three on a table. 
and part of the, the one turn was given to the collectors immediately, divided among them. The other turn was given to the supervisor, and another turn was gone to the bank. And this is how he started his reform. Realizing this, now asked them to put the money together and lodge it in the bank. And within, for the history of Basse Area Council, that was the period that we have seen the highest amount of um, uh, revenue lodged into the, into the bank. And, 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 and one of the also, also measures taken was immediately after that, um, uh, the, 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 the management, that is the CEO, decided to resuffle, move some of these collectors from their comfort zone. Like if you are in the market, they move you to the Lumo. If you are in the Lumo, they move you elsewhere. So um, uh, revenue started changing. So obviously it is right. This has been going on, and that's why people don't want to move from the, um, uh, the, risk, the normal resetting system to the automated system, which will uh, uh, control, give them control and checks and balances. True. Um, again, one important um, point that uh, keeps coming to my mind as well in relation to this um, Mansukongo area is the fact that the, the, the director of finance is the very person that does the collection. And how is that possible? Can, can you tell us more about that? That was the? the? The director of finance is the collector of the revenue. Is that the normal practice? The director of finance, um, uh, if we say, is the chief collector in the sense that he is the one responsible of all the collectors, but then physically going to collect yes. is not normal. That's not a practice. That's not his job. He has more job than he has more work than that. So that is the um, that is the issue here in Mazakonko, and I'm not sure whether it is today the first time that you are hearing this. Definitely, this Very one. Well. And again, you will be interested to know the management's response in relation to um, that particular finding, wherein the, the director himself had been the collector. And as well, there were some financial um, misappropriation, let me call it that way. And the response, if I may read to you, of the management is that the amount has been confirmed as an unposted receipt numbers. However, it has been accepted by, by the then director of finance who accepted it as an undertaking to be deducted from his gratuity payment. I'm not sure whether you are aware as well of this response from the president. Yes. And, and what do you have to say to that? Yes, I think this one, it happens before the audit response, the director of finance actually retired. So there was a struggle between the management and the, the then director of finance to even respond to the audit query, um, uh, to call him to come um, uh, as being the action officer to um, respond to some of these audit queries um, was difficult. So as a result, uh, when it was agreed that um, uh, this has been uh, detected, because that time he retired, his um, uh, um, payment dues were not processed yet. So it was, it was um, recommended that, and then he also accepted that. Once they are processing his gratuity, they should redu re uh, this, um, uh, reduce this amount from um, uh, deduct the amount from the from the from the gratuity yes but then um the further comment from the auditor highlights that in fact that that had never happened as well that practice no actually not the practice the fact that um, there should have been deductions from the gratuity it never happened is it a further yes a, a further comment yes from, from the auditor yes Okay, uh, um, uh, that, if that is not done, that is the management um, uh, deciding because they've agreed with the director of finance. I remember that meeting that it will be deducted from his um, uh, graduate and that the graduate was processed. So we expect them to um, uh, deduct it from that as when they are paying him. What would you say would have been the most appropriate measure um, 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 in this instance where you have seen clearly that um, a director of finance had engaged in such practice at some point, um, uh, in fact, ma causing management to resort to deducting his gratuity. What would you say would have been the most appropriate measure in this circumstance? In recovering the fund, the most... Um, uh, Not only recovering the fund, 
Yeah, but, I'm coming. No, just to guide you, not only recovering the phone, but in fact dealing with this issue because it's more or less like um, it is an irregularity. You can call exactly. it a, a fraudulent um, um, practice or whatsoever. But it, it may require investigation. It may require um, taking some drastic actions in addition to recovering um, um, council or, um, or, or, or state's money. So, yes, please proceed. Yes, um, uh, that is true. That just like I started, in, in recovering the phone, administrative measures, once she has admitted, and then this has been maybe the first practice, depending on the circumstance. If this is the only offense that has been, um, uh, 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 that the Director of Finance is involved in as far as this nature is concerned, administrative means can be taken and by um, uh, allowing the deduction. However, if this practice has been there, and then it has occurred several times, um, uh, the matter should have been um, uh, taken further by maybe reporting to police investigation and also recovering the money from him um, uh, by force. And what would, would be your, your role as an institution in your oversight function in trying to um, um, address these issues where um, it is not adequately addressed by the area councils? I think um, there should have been a follow-up to find out whether the, uh, actually the deduction was made um, uh, during the time of his payment. Very well. Um, we will now also um, address the issues of... Um, Sorry, can I come in? Um, yes. um, Mr. Sanyang, I want you to kindly clarify the issue of the fact that um, um, in your evidence you have said that um, in the case of the finance director, um, whether it was, um, you may correct me if I am wrong, that that is his first time of doing such. So is it your opinion or your perception that if somebody um, does an illegality, uh, would he be accorded uh, an opportunity to an opportunity of redress which is not pursuant to the law? Is that what you are telling us? Um, uh, if I understand you well, is that pursuant to the law means taking the person to court? Or because following no, yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pursuant to the law is, if it is my understanding, you might correct me if I am wrong, that um, if an irregularity is found within a municipality, I believe it is the responsibility of the, of the institution concerned to take steps to investigate and find out and take appropriate measures pursuant to the law guiding them. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. But if the matter is left to be dealt with administratively, is that the norm or the practice that you allow the councils to do? No. I mean, I don't know what, what, what you understand by administrative. Administrative is the same process. The same process means you have to verify and confirm that this is an offense. But administratively, it will require you to find out whether this is a occurrence so that you can take a stiffer measure. The administratively, it will tell you that if this is something that has been reoccurring, you have to apply maybe so, uh, suspension, dismissal, or any stiffer measure. But if it is a first offense, you are given the leverage to apply um, uh, uh, redress measures. So that's what I'm saying. If in the event this is an offense which is um, a first offense and is not an offense that required dismissal, you have to use administrative redress by um, uh, maybe allowing the person to pay or allowing the person to be surcharged or something like that. Uh, those, those, those measures is what I'm talking about. Not all offense directly go for dismissal or other, other, other stiff um, uh, administrative actions. Some of them have been first offenders or even in court, in police, they will say it's a first offender, you know, they will give you the opportunity. That doesn't mean the law doesn't take its course. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay, further to that, um, um, in this situation, whose decision was it to, um, to um, decide that the money found, um, the irregularity found um, that the um, finance director has done? should be deducted from his graduate. Who made that decision? That's the uh, management. 
the management of the council asked to respond to the query. And in their query, they called the attention of the director of finance to put to him that this is irregularity and that he admitted that it is wrong. And among their uh, part of their discussion, he agreed to pay it back. And they agreed to that. And they also agreed that it can be deducted from his um, uh, entitlement. So in the first instance, in, the, in that meeting, is there any records to show that this is what they agreed upon and the party has agreed that he was liable to what was alleged against him? Is there any records to show that? Not at my end. This was not done at my office. But from the audit report, what he's reading, yes. that they, 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 they discussed with the director of finance, he has agreed. Mm -hmm. The management responded. Mm -hmm. He has agreed and he has agreed to pay it from his um, uh, graduate. What prompted his resignation? No, he's, he's retired. He has, yes. has gone to the age of retirement. retirement. Yes. All right, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, you will see that, in fact, the, the Director of Finance had actually um, have issues regarding unposted collection amounted to $27,800. So pr probably that, that was not the first time that um, he had had these issues um, with respect to um, um, not following due, due process and not, and not being able to account for, for monies being collected. Yeah, if, 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 if I, let me make this clarification. Um, uh, your question is what determined for me to indicate if yeah. it is a false offense. But then I'm not saying that this particular offense that he did should have been treated that way. I said maybe probably the reason what as could be the reason is if this is the first offense, the course of action would have been um, uh, to have um, uh, a redress mechanism. But if it is proven that this is a repeated um, uh, offender, it should be given um, uh, the full force of the law by, 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 by taking um, uh, a drastic action for, to, to teach others not to repeat those kind of um, offenses. Yes, I am. Um... I know exactly what, what you were saying. I'm just telling you, in addition, that you may not have um, known about that, in fact, there were two separate incidents, um, which um, perhaps you were not, um, you know, with, with, with the required information at the time. So, um, again, but uh, uh, other issues with respect to uh, Mansa Konko is that um, I'm not sure how frequent you do the inspection. But you will see that there are no bank reconciliations. Um, like these are across the board problems with respect to so many area councils. I'm not sure whether you are aware of that. But these are common problems that you may find in Basse, you may find in uh, Mansakonko. In fact, we have already highlighted those issues with respect to BCC as well. So, um, but one, one um, last issue that I want us to discuss before we move. Uh, which is also very important for the for the effective running of the area council, is that when the auditor um, visited the Lumos and so on and so forth, you will realize that there were no proper sanitation, even in, even in the markets. Uh, it was um, found at a very much um, um, bad state. Even toilets, you will realize that um, male and female toilets, um, that both men and women are using one toilet instead of having a male toilet and a female toilet, for example, and they were not in a good condition. I'm not sure whether in any of your inspections, if any, you found out the state of the, of the market at, um, in, in Mazakongo and Soma area. Yes. Um, uh, this issue of um, uh, toilets and their uh, maintenance, sometimes it is, avail it is uh, available, but it's not properly maintained. Uh, to an extent that people don't even want to use them. Uh, I, I don't know whether you were once previewed to go into Serakunda market toilet. You know, uh, um, these are um, uh, situations that we normally see sometimes the, even the public will, 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 will um, uh, report some of these issues to the ministry. And then we will call the council in question to make sure that um, uh, these problems are, are, are addressed. But then it is a primary responsibility of council to make sure that where they gather people and their collective revenue at that point, they should provide adequate toilet facility for, 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 the, for, the, for the vendors 
or for those people that they gather at that place. And uh, of recent, um, uh, in fact, uh, some of these projects, uh, uh, government supported through community development by providing certain um, uh, um, uh, toilets to certain markets. And also, um, uh, Mansa Konko in particular, when the vendors who were stationed at the uh, ferry crossing were moved, there was a recommendation for a market to be built for them, which was provided with um, uh, uh, enough toilet facility. So this, to an extent, is sad, but it should not have happened. And uh, it's something that cannot be compromised because you cannot bring all those people together and you allow them to be using, um, uh, maybe you'll find um, an open defecation at some point to be entertained because of the lack of facility. Very well. Um, we'll just now touch on a few issues um, with respect to Basse Area Council. Um, in Basse Area Council, um, there is the audit report dated the 6th day of May 2021. And for the year ended 31st December 2018. Um, again, we have an issue with respect to incomplete asset re register. Now, before I dwell into the, 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 the merits of the findings of the auditor, um, you would agree that um, the issue of uh, lack of um, issue of having an incomplete asset register. It's an issue that cross ac across the board in so many area councils. You, cannot, you can hardly find a very complete register, um, um, asset register, for example. Can you just um, give us a background of how assets are, being, are supposed to be registered in um, with respect to the area councils and why is it important to have a very complete um, asset register? Yes, um, uh, asset registers are very important to show the council's assets in terms of showing their um, uh, um, uh, value. Because the asset of the council um, uh, tells you how that council is, is liquid, and also the transparency in terms of what, what, what they own and what they have put in place, what the public can gauge them, and what the public can measure them. But uh, at the same time, these assets needed to be recorded so that one they would not slip into um, uh, um, uh, other hands they are, they could easily slip into other hands like in Basse, the reference point when we were building the new Basse market we realized that there were properties within the market and we tried to investigate as to why we have private properties within the market we realized that there were certain officials who were working in the council before decided to take part of this market and then document it in their names and then have documents for this for a number of years, maybe 10, 20 years now. So when we are building market, we were constrained with space. We want to now recover or reclaim some of these um, uh, assets because we thought people did them illegally only to realize that these um, uh, properties were documented by council itself to, 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 to these staff because they were insiders. So we, if, there were, uh, um, uh, an, uh, if there was an asset um, uh, register showing this particular um, uh, market registered and uh, showing the dimension and all the properties within, maybe that would have been difficult for, for, for somebody to do that kind of thing. So the asset register to an extent is, is a very important tool um, uh, for, the, for the council and, and it should always be um, uh, available. Yes, in fact, um, with, the, um, with respect to, to Basse, one of the um, example is when you purchase, um, they purchase about, about seven motor bikes, but um, they, you, it does not, it did not reflect in the asset register, for example, so basically, um, like just like exactly what you are saying, um, it can easily slip into to some personal gains or personal benefit, and therefore that will definitely um, rob the council from its um, lawful investment. An other issue is um, in the in each of uh, in the, in the matter of Basse, 
there were no debtors and creditors control account. Can you tell us more about that? The debtors and uh, creditors control account is um, where a bank, uh, sorry, the, the, the council is dealing with people whom they are taking facilities from as their debtors. And then those that also deal with them, that they have given them facilities. So this should have, um, uh, where you take, for example, they have um, uh, banks that they can take facilities from, they have um, uh, petrol stations that they deal with, and then they take fuel in, 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 in areas, and uh, other debtors that they deal with. But equally, the bank also give out facilities to, to staff, they give them loan, they deal with ward councils, they give them certain um, uh, soft loans and the other things. So those two should always be um, uh, available so that the council will know how much you owe to an extent that when you want to go for more loan, you will know that my revenue will not be able to service um, uh, this road. And also where you um, uh, give out some of these facilities, it should be recorded in such a way that it will guide you as to whether you have passed your threshold of what you um, uh, um, uh, set for yourself in giving out loan or facilities outside so that you don't give out more than what will affect your operations or what will affect the targets that you set for yourself. Very well. Um, I will stop that here for now with respect to the, the audit findings of the key areas in relation to the audit findings. And um, unless um, the, the commissioners have any question in, with respect to the issues discussed earlier, I may want to move on other issues. Um, I will PS, uh, so let's now discuss um, one of the issues that we have just briefly... Sorry, Council. Sorry, Council. Um, let, me just, let me just ask one question with respect to Bata Area Council. Um, Mr. Sanyang, um, it has been noted in some of the reports that um, there were issues at the Bata Area Council. And um, prior, prior to the submission of the audit report, um, the ministry had knowledge of some of those um, activities. Can you explain to the commission what steps you took before you were issued the audit report and um, what were the, the things you found out before the audit report was presented to you? Yes, um, uh, the, the last audit before the last audit, in fact, the, the CEO once consulted me to say the way he sees the council going, he suspects the director of finance um, uh, um, uh, is not staring the council finance as well, and uh, he is concerned. And there were issues also that we detected that receipts, books were found being printed at council there by at, you know, Nigerian, and then this was given to some members of, um, uh, sorry, revenue collectors, and they were using this book parallel to the um, uh, council receipt books. And these monies were going into personal accounts. And also there was um, uh, an instance where it was reported that revenues collected were understated. You collect, for example, from uh, a shopkeeper who was supposed to pay 10000 You collect 3000 from him. He will give you 5000 for your pocket. And council will lose 5 plus the other 2000 making 7000 so these were a series of um, uh, issues reported. Then we, uh, as a result of that, I instructed uh, my internal auditor to visit Bazigar Area Council to um, uh, help to confirm some of these allegations and also to dip into uh, um, uh, a system audit. This time we will go for overhaul system audit. This is not only pointing at um, uh, um, uh, revenue, it was dealing with um, uh, manpower, it was dealing with um, procurement, it was dealing with all the um, uh, areas of council. And uh, it is very disturbing um, uh, that the findings were serious. 
where we see um, uh, just as I mentioned, uh, people paying up to a tune of six million into private accounts. And I must say this, we have to commend the audit team because it's not easy to link somebody's private account to an account where somebody is paying that money directly into somebody's private account. It's out of their suspicion that they had to request for the private account statement of this person and realize that this account was receiving payments from council staff. So after the process of this, uh, with other findings like procurement uh, issues where procurement um, procedures were not followed, some of the um, collectors were um, uh, understating the, the, the amount they collected. And uh, with other issues regarding the um, uh, financial um, uh, dealings at the council, when this audit report came out, we first um, uh, received it, we shared it with, with the relevant authorities, and we also um, uh, extracted, first action, extracted all the um, uh, findings, and then um, uh, instruct the CEO that the first action is he has to make sure the audit report is acted on, which immediately some of the officers who it is strange to mention this, but the government subvention paid to council two million was found in private accounts. Which private accounts? Those yeah, this found? one, according to the the payments, it affects the director of finance, and also there was a payment that they alleged also to the CEO. Then when we, when we had, um, uh, detected this, we called the attention of the council. The monies were paid back um, uh, as far as the payment for the CEO was concerned. He said, this money, I don't know whether they had loaned themselves or what, but then he paid back the amount. The director of finance um, uh, could not pay, which, who was instructed to also pay back immediately. The, the, the amount, because this was a government subvention meant for a project. The other disturbing, and the balance of, it was, this was 100,000, 100,000, it was about two, 200,000 out of 2 million, the other amount could not be asserted. And then we asked uh, those officials to um, uh, pay back the balance of the money. Equally, we realized that there was a project that was being run. I think this was uh, a road project. And this road project, if the contract sum was like two million, the project ended up paying five million. And the director of finance was questioned, asked, oh, how comes you pay until you pass the contract sum? He said he could not realize. Then he was asked to also recover that amount in excess from um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the contractor. And uh, as a result, this audit report, as of now, is with the police. And as of now, the police are in Basse, trying to um, uh, um, uh, confirm some of these things. And some arrests are made, and then some um, uh, statements have been taken uh, regarding this uh, particular issue, uh, some of these issues. Yes, just last question, then I give it to you. Uh, did you receive similar reports from other councils that warranted your intervention? And can you highlight on them? Yes, we received um, uh, a similar report. One of it is uh, the ones we acted on. One of it is BCC. BCC also we received um, uh, uh, a complaint and also an audit report. Uh, some of these is that there is a payment of about nine million for a ziare, ziare in Senegal, and the council fund 
is not supposed to go beyond Banjul to KM, much more to Senegal. Um, uh, and these are some of the findings that um, came out with vouchers of payment. So we also, at that point, um, uh, subjected these to the national audit for a verification before we moved to the, um, uh, to the police. But this was all overtaken by the, the commission. Uh, but that's why those process are uh, allowed to uh, uh, the investigators will come up with some of these things because we avail we have the documents that are produced hard documents that are produced to collaborate some of these um, uh, um, uh, payments for the purpose of clarity um uh, peers um are you telling the commission that um at the level of the banjo city council nine million was spent uh on the issue of ziare yes and um, that um, you are now availed with the vouchers of the people that have been paid of that money yeah the the, the councillors the then councillors i think the five elected councillors and two nominated councillors came up and then extracted some of these um, uh, payment um, uh, either vouchers or receipts um, uh, from the council and then provided them for further investigation. This was reported and submitted to us as a ministry. Then we subjected to um, a further investigation by the audit to verify and then take appropriate action. So is um, this information you are giving us, is it, is it contained in the audit report of the BCC that has been done by the auditor or is um, now subject to investigation? Yeah, because we wanted when once this um, uh, audit verification is done, we would have submitted this to the commission. But the response we got from the um, uh, national audit is that they don't say all, but they said most of it. They could, they did not give us um, uh, as we expected to say a is true or not or whatever. But they wrote to us back to say that um, uh, most of the issues raised um, uh, are in the audit report. Uh, I, I, I was not very much um, uh, clear with that in the sense that I was, I was going to expect that I would say section 21 of our audit refer to your complaint number two, uh, so and so, so that I can easily relate to them and I can um, make sense out of them. But then it was a general um, comment to say um, uh, most of these things are reported in the, in the, in the audit findings. And they said they are coming to do a new audit, maybe some imagined issues um, uh, will also be revealed in their uh, new audit. Uh, Mr. Pierce, can you elaborate on some of the other councils that have also reported uh, similar cases of fraud or misappropriation of funds? Yes, um, uh, we also at the Kanife uh, municipality, we have um, uh, reports of one, the the Mbalit project. The Mbalit project was one, first the, the price of the vehicles was said to be inflated and also the Mbalit project, the concept was the project was going to fund and repay the, the loan. But I understand at a point, the council, the account that was open for these monies to be lodged in, the council advised that they discontinue paying and let the council take over the repayment of the loan. Now, instead, the council's budget is what goes to repay the loan. But on, in the meantime, that, bo that but particular account that has been put, the private account that has been put, I understand withdrawal were made there, and then um, uh, this withdrawal, this was some of the allegations or problems mentioned to the ministry by the, the counter allegations made by the, the, the then CEO. Um, uh, and these findings, we wanted to subject it to an independent body to look into. That was the ministerial commission which was crippled. But then these were issues together with some contracts of 
uh, the pavement of the Westfield was single source. According to them, was given to the brother, to the mayor. We have not seen this document, but these are the informations that come that it was said to be um, um, uh, uh, a sort of, I don't know what was the right word they used, but it was sort of the, 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 the brother was helping the council. But I think the project cost, if I have, if I caught it right, about 60 million or, or some, 6 million or 60 million, I'm not sure about that. But the process, according to the, 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 the deputy mayor, did not follow the due process. And, um, and, uh, and also when they were going for the, the contract for the uh, buses, I think we all recall when the council applied for duty waiver and instructed the ministry to contact the to liaise with the Ministry of Finance to avail them a duty waiver. And our position is you have this contract has never gone through the right process. But notwithstanding, God put up a proper request because this is a benefit the benefit of the community. Uh, the, even though the initial process has not followed the due process, but now that this materials are already in town and you have already used council money and pay then which duty are we asking to be waived when already you know when we said go and put your request in order and then enable us to go and then approach ministry of finance they want to launch this on a particular day and they don't want that day to miss the pay to central government and now they said we should ask for duty waiver we say that's contradictory. You cannot pay, and I waive the duty for you. You have already paid. So that is about done. When it goes to the consolidated fund, we cannot withdraw that back. So it's not been the reverse. Yeah, and also at um, uh, Brikama Area Council, we have a situation where I think still people start approaching us, where a team of individuals where revenue collectors <clears throat> and these revenue collectors were found to be um, uh, doing something unscrupulous act or mismanagement and this matter was reported to the ministry and we sent it to the service commission then to look into it and the service commission said they want uh, a further advice whether we can seek the support of internal audit directorate to go and look into this matter and confirm so we informed the directorate of internal audit they went in but the director wrote back to us and said i want an extension of mandate because the mandate you have given me to look at her I have seen the collaborators and my mandate doesn't allow me to reach them. So now give me um, uh, an extended mandate so that I can reach out to those people. And funnily, the council that reported the matter doesn't want this extended mandate. So it is contradictory. You know, that means I'm pointing at her. I don't want other people to be involved. And other people are the ones working with that person. So um, uh, that was granted by it was not granted by us but we sent it back to the commission to say you tax you said let these people investigate a but they said in order for them to do a efficiently they need to be given b c and d so that they will collaborate a whether you are ready to give them that mandate and the commission agreed and this mandate was given and this led to some of the staff being dismissed and uh, it also led to a process where people were saying, no, let's discontinue the process, you know, um, uh, because it's reaching out to people they don't want to reach. But in the process, when people are affected and doing the wrong thing, they should be um, uh, seen to be punished, or the law should be seen to be taking its course. Especially when you, it is proven that this is a selective pointed um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, challenge. At BCC, I forgot, 
this particular EU project, when the deputy CEO came in, appointed, was because, because of her role in bringing this EU project, she came in appointed as by the commission as the deputy CEO to the council and was entrusted with this EU project. But because of the professionalism and the, um, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, following of the due process of the lady, the fight starts uh, to a point that she could not resist and she had to leave. Because um, uh, when we realized that uh, at one point she doesn't have an office. Now, sorry, Piers, to interrupt. At the, at at that particular point, were you put on notice that these were the challenges she was going through? And if yes, what did your office do, you understand, to protect her from being bullied, as you said? Yes. The, the, the office, as we know, we are not responsible for the employment. But then we forwarded this matter to the Service Commission. At one point, she was even telling me that um, uh, I will leave because it seems the ministry is not protecting me. But then I told her that it's, we have our limits. These issues, I don't want to deal with them because they are not directly my responsibility. We reported, we, we sent the matter to the service commission. And the service commission deliberated on the matter. That was the reason why there was that movement for the deputy CEO from KMC under the Banyun, the swap was proposed by the service commission just to enable this lady to move and then move on with her job um, uh, which we um, uh, she went to report accepted at KMC and was asked that okay we want to work with you but not provided an office and yet they wrote to us to say they know they they, 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 they are still working with um, uh, the previous one so but then the commission was to decide because the moment we I think we had a lot of discussion in the interference of the ministry into the commission. I was very careful in dealing, drawing a line between my limitation and where they, their, their work starts. I don't want to go into what is their responsibility. And at one point, I told the minister that if these issues are not addressed, I would recommend that we dissolve this um, commission and bring in a new commission. But this is all happening at a time when uh, the councils, because of the commission now starting to take certain position in, 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 in bringing sanity to the council, started questioning the, 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 the commission itself, started saying the commission, it started with the appointment of um, Senator Martin. That is where the problem, this Senator Martin's problem started from her appointment. From her appointment, the mayor was not happy. And that's where the problem starts. From there, it came to Kajali, the deputy mayor, who was given the position, and the mayor had to write to the commission to say that that process, he feels, should have been re-advertised. And the commission said, we stood by our position to give Kajali because he was the most qualified person at the time. Because uh, the mayor said he would have preferred one of the candidates at the council, which was um, uh, the director of admit, to be his preferred candidate. Even though at the meeting he openly said that the boy is not efficient. He is not a team player. Yet he said he wants him because he can execute his projects for him. Um, P.S., uh, we have a little bit of a difficulty in understanding um, the actual role of the ministry, the commission, vis-a-vis -vis with uh, um, the role responsibility of the internal mechanism of the, the municipalities. Because if I stand to be corrected, you have told us here that um, correspondences are directed, you have given instructions that correspondences should be directed to you before it goes to the commission. So my view is that um, if correspondences are to be directed to you before it is taken to the commission, it means you are privy of 
the information or the issues before they get to the commission. And that you said sometimes when um, situations arise, you look at the issues and advise the commission. I believe that I may be wrong. I believe that um, the ministry hasn't done a good job in delineating your responsibility and taking um, your responsibility as to implementing what the law gives you as an oversight authority. Am I correct? Uh, no. With the fact that our oversight authority cannot be applied to an established body, that is the service commission. The reason why our um, issues come through the permanent secretary is to look at whether compliance is applied. If it's compliant, we have no further dealing with that request but to forward it to the service commission. That makes the decision. But then in the event there is a need for compliance, we will ask. I give an example. There was a time that um, a request was sent for somebody to be promoted. There was no qualification sent. There was um, uh, no, rec no record of what was his previous, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, position, previous positions that he has um, handled. And uh, when was his last promotion? These are all requests. That these are all data that have to be presented to the commission to enable them to make decisions. So when the request came to us, we referred the request back to the council and asked them to fulfill these conditions. Because we know those are the conditions that the service commission will look into to uh, actually um, uh, do their work. So uh, that is our limit. But then if the only extra that we can do if we have evidence that the service commission itself is compromised and that it's not doing its work, then we, we can um, uh, recommend to the minister for us to um, uh, change and uh, bring in a new service commission. That is the, um, uh, uh, that is, that is the link. So um, then I will be correct to say that as an oversight institution, you've been doing everything that you are supposed to do for someone to the laws that guide your responsibility towards the councils? If I said everything, I might not be correct. I have to admit that some lapses are there, as I indicated earlier. Um, uh, that in the oversight function, sometimes um, uh, we don't um, uh, enforce as required. That is true. Back to you, uh, Patrick. Oh, do you have... Um, Pierre Sanyen, does council resolution supersede the legislation? No. Council resolutions are where they apply. And uh, in the powers of the council, it is clearly stated that the council can only apply their powers where it doesn't infringe on into other bodies that are set up by that com the, 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 the act where, where it, their, their action doesn't infringe on their mandate. Otherwise, they needed to take permission, approval from that body first before they can do that. Thank you. Any more questions from the commissioners? Um, Council, you can proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Very, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, Honorable PS, maybe we discuss um, the issues regarding the Senator Martin and KMC issue that you have you've just uh, started to discuss. We have, we have earlier on um, in, in the previous sittings um, discussed briefly about the KMC and Senator Martin issue. But um, if we can have an in-depth discussion regarding that matter, it will be very helpful. Um, you have highlighted just moments ago that the issue with Senator Martin started at the very point of her appointment. Can you please elaborate more on that? Yes. Um, uh, during the appointment of Senator Martin, as required by law, the 
interview is attended by observers. That is, in the case of a CEO, the mayor or a chairperson will be present. And in the case of a CEO, the ministry is represented at the level of the permanent secretary, otherwise a deputy permanent secretary, because these are senior positions where you need to guide the commission. And during the interview, um, uh, we had somebody, uh, this is the uh, this, uh, director, current director of ADMIT, uh, Jaja, who was um, uh, actually the mayor said was his candidate. Can you please give us the full name? Jaja Cham, if I could remember. Very well, please proceed. Yes. And uh, during this interview, Serap happened to be the successful candidate. And during, after the interview, we were asked to give our view, even though it doesn't make any addition to the decision of the of the of the of the how do you, uh, the, the the service commission. So during that intervention, um, uh, uh, the the mayor did commend Senabu for being successful. She was not there then. But she comment um, uh, that she's been um, uh, selected to be the mayor, sorry, the CEO of, of the council. But have concern that you know that the lady um, uh, was working in so many places. You know, maybe might not um, uh, stay in, in in KFC because she was working with Gamsel. I think Gamsel or Gamtel, and later moved to Gibos, if I could remember, and uh, moved to um, uh, applied for council. But then, after the interview, we all agreed that the deputy CEO who applied for, current deputy CEO who applied for both CEO and was shortlisted, and also a deputy CEO, and he was shortlisted in that one also. It was unanimously agreed among the members of, sorry, the, the, the commissioners that the deputy CEO position, the Kajali would not be invited for that interview because he has already got a score when he was interviewed for the CEO position. So now they will use that score if anybody interview for the deputy CEO that has scored more than him, then that person will be considered. But if scored less than, that one will be um, uh, given, uh, he will be given the position, which was applied. To God it short, nobody scored above him, and then that's why he became the deputy CEO. But the CEO's case, that was the observation, and uh, that is how, in the initial stage, they split over to their operations as um, uh, when they when they get to the council. Please proceed. Yes, after that process of appointment, they 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 they, they were operating, um, uh, and uh, at some point. I think that is where the issue of the deputy mayor came up, where the, I think the deputy mayor was caught on the tape, according to uh, reports, um, uh, either soliciting bribery or was being given bribery or negotiating bribery. And this was... Just for um, the record, who is the, who is the deputy mayor you are referring to? Uh, it was Musaba. Okay. Honorable Musaba. Please they used proceed. to call them. Um, uh, and this issue was brought to the attention of the mayor according to the CEO. And uh, the mayor, according to her, asked her to, for them to downplay because um, uh, this was a serious matter, but then they will try and then get the uh, deputy CEO to resign, the deputy mayor to resign which was done, and uh, he resigned as a deputy mayor, but continued as a councillor. There, 
comes the issue of this um, uh, fraud, where the CEO, on behalf of the Staff Welfare Association, took a facility, a loan facility, from a bank. And then they were to buy a plot uh, measuring 100 meters by 100 meters for a, um, a housing or a land to be loaned out to the members of the Staff Welfare Association. Yeah. Now, uh, b before you proceed with respect to the, the, um, the issue of fraud, with respect to um, the CEO, can you confirm whether with, with the issue of the deputy mayor, whether, the, whether there, there was any formal complaint of any sort with respect to any um, malpractice or fraud or bribery to, yes. your, to your office? Yes, that was um, uh, the, the CEO brought the matter. That was when the issue of this fraud came. When it was reported to us, she also came up with this report that there were other um, uh, malpractices which were not reported as well. So the, among them was this bribery case on the deputy mayor. Please proceed. Yes. When this issue of um, uh, fraud was reported to the minister by the uh, CEO, sorry, the mayor, the, the matter was looked into, but then at the same time, the, when, when the, when the, when the um, uh, CEO and the team which were, who were alleged to have done that malpractice, also um, uh, brought, reported to the minister, other claims of fraud. So by the act, the minister, if he looks at some of these issues and they, he considers them to be grave in nature, he is to constitute a commission to look into it so that it can now be an independent body. And in the process, he needs to constitute force an inspection to confirm, to collaborate, or to go on the ground to look at this. And the, this inspection team was also constituted. Um, when we constituted the inspection team, I decided to include some internal auditors into the inspection team. The inspection was supposed to do by our inspectorate unit. But for balancing, I requested from the internal auditor to give us about two or three people to join our inspection team to go on the ground and do the inspection so that they come up with a report which will also help as a fulfillment of a condition to now go ahead with the um, uh, commission. When, when was this? Which year was this? Uh, this was around 2011, if I could remember. Sorry, 2021. 2021. 2021, yes. Yeah. So when this issue of inspection was done, the inspection report was um, uh, provided, and uh, now the minister decided and confirmed that the issue at hand being grave in nature uh, has to constitute a commission to look at the, cl the, the claim and counterclaim and other issues that have been mentioned so that they can um, uh, come up with recommendations that will be um, uh, um, uh, implemented. This was what brought about the setting up of the, of the commission, uh, the ministerial commission at the time. And the ministerial commission was um, a challenge in court, and then that brought about the, some of the powers of the commission being seen as not appropriate, and as such, the commission could not proceed. So that's um, uh, how other issues added led us to um, uh, the commission of inquiry into all the councils. Now, um, with, respect, with, with respect to um, the issue of Senator Martin, now, wh were there any steps further um, taken by the, by the council in relation to the, um, the allegations of fraud against her, apart yes, from reporting the matter to your office? 
Yes, the council went ahead and then passed a resolution to indefinitely suspend her. And this is what um, we found to be wrong. Uh, and, and, I remember and, and, and why is that wrong? Because it's not the mandate of the council and resolution cannot be passed on other bodies' mandate. So please tell us, um, whose mandate is it to, um, to suspend indefinitely or suspend, or, um, suspend the, the CEO? Uh, disciplinary matters are responsibility of the local government service commission. Please proceed. Yes, and uh, we, we have two issues here. One of it is the fundamental thing that people are not focusing on is who did the offense and against who. Is what is fundamental here. It's alleged that the CEO, together with about five others, if I could have five or seven others, did 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 made an offense. But against who? This is where we are not focusing on. Against the council staff association. This is a private independent body who have no connection with the council and they can redress their problems through taking them to police or taking them to court directly. Because this is not a council arm, it's not an official arm. These are staff that come together to set up an association. So are you saying that if a CEO is found to have um um, committed um, criminal actions but not against the council then the council cannot take any step is that what you're saying that even, body, even though it is against um, um, staff association yes that body the staff association is a body and they have the rights to take the CEO um, and report the matter to the police I agree I, yes. I, I and agree also, with that. yes my point is whether as well you are saying council cannot as well um, um, address this, the issues of, um, of, of fraud or any form of criminal activity in relation to a very high-ranking staff, the CEO, is that, your, is, is that your, um, your point? That is my, my, my take is the council should not unilaterally take a decision when they are not being authorized. We, by... agree, we agree with that. Uh, yeah. let, let's see for now, um, your position is very clear that the manner in which council went about indefinitely suspending um, the CEO is wrong. And, that, and that's your position. Yes. And you've clearly highlighted that it should have been taken to the, the commission, which is the right body. Yes. Again, but the point that you've highlighted that um, we have to have our mind to as to who the crime is committed against. Yes. And your position is it is committed against the staff association and not the council yes so what is your point there are you saying that because of the fact that you opine that the the, the actual the crimes have been committed against the against the um, the the staff association so therefore council should not have interfered with that matter is that your position not directly the, the staff association should take if they want they can report her to the employer that is the council and council can either put her request for her to be put on administrative leave when the matter can be investigated until she is proven innocent or guilty and the appropriate actions can be taken. But can council address the matter as well in, 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 in maybe, maybe um, reporting the, the matter to the commission or so and so forth, any form of redress, can they do that? To report when? To can, report, can council, take the matter to the, to the commission? No, can, they, yes, of, um, can council address the matter as being a serious matter even though it is not directly fraud against the council as you have, you have put it? Yes. but it's fought against the association. But yes. did it warrant um, any form of ad, um, redress or address by, um, by, 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 by council itself? Yes, council can take actions. That's what I'm saying. They can um, uh, take administrative action by reporting this matter as a serious matter, that the council, if that is a fraud, and they think that the CEO cannot be handling funds when these kind of allegations are made against her, they should recommend that administrative leave be given to her to be off their um, uh, administration in, in that period um, until the matter is settled. That is what I think should have been the cause of action. Very well.
So now, when they, um, as far as your evidence is concerned, when they um, took the matter into their own hands, um, you, you've highlighted that the disciplinary actions are supposed to be taken by commission. Now, when they took the matter into their own hands and indefinitely suspended um, the, the then CEO or the CEO, um, Senator Martin, now what followed suit? When they, when they suspended, yes. uh, uh, the minister called their attention and wrote a letter to the, to the mayor um, uh, indicating that he has overstepped his boundaries and he should rescind um, uh, that decision and put up a request um, uh, to the service commission through the ministry for um, uh, a redress. Yes, so um, was that instruction um, followed? No. Please tell us more about that. Um, uh, the council um, uh, refused to rescind that decision. And later they wrote to the service commission directly who um, uh, advised them to write through the ministry for, for redress. And uh, we told them that um, uh, we still stand by the position that you first have to rescind uh, an, an illegal action then the matter will be forwarded to the, uh, to the, to the service commission for redress. Now, um, was the matter ever forwarded to the service commission for, for, for redress? No. Do you know whether the service commission, commission at any time dealt over this matter? Yes, later. Please tell us more about it. Um, uh, after the matter of when the matter went to the court and the court made uh, a pronouncement because the the council took the matter after the, um, uh, the administrative um, uh, approach which was to suspend and also to try to send this information uh, sorry this um, uh, problem to the service commission they also took the matter to the court I did request in the court to um, uh, allow their suspension or I'll not allow set up in the court. I cannot remember the charges exactly, but something similar to that. And then the court ruling came that um, uh, Senabu is a public servant and uh, cannot, they cannot uphold that request made by the council. And when this request, when this judgment came, uh, my office wrote to the Ministry of Justice for the interpretation of this particular judgment, whether it means that Senabu should go back uh, to her office. And uh, we received uh, an advice through the Ministry of Justice that, yes, since they said they cannot stop her, then she can go back to the office. Then we now forwarded the matter to the service commission. We first used the administrative means. We asked KMC to allow Sena back following the ruling as the admit, uh, oversight body. But they wrote back to say they would not allow it. So the matter was forwarded to the um, uh, service commission who made uh, um, uh, their decision that she should go back to the office. And this going back to the office was communicated to the council with a lot of communications um, uh, where they w she went back to the council maybe three or four times, being rejected. And then at the end of the day, eventually, um, uh, we had to now um, uh, make so that we, I can say, put her in the office. That was done. And then later, the deputy CEO was also instructed to hand over by the commission, to hand over to the CEO responsibilities. And uh, there was a memo, a council uh, resolution, a memo passed to the deputy CEO from the office of the mayor telling him that if we, if we act in accordance with the service commission is an contempt of the council resolution. And if any contempt of that council resolution will tantamount to some kind of action. 
So the CEO had a choice. The deputy CEO had a choice to go by the service commission decision and maybe face whatever is coming from the council as being a contempt of their resolution or to go by the, um, uh, the position of the council and now face any consequence that comes from the decision of the service commission. And the deputy CEO choose to go by the decision of the council. And the service commission, after several correspondence to him, in fact, at some point, the chairman of the service commission wrote to this deputy CEO directly. And then this was not adhered to, and they have given him an ultimatum that on or before this date, you have to hand over. And when this was conveyed to them, the council sent in a letter to say that they have now transferred their, I don't know, administrative what, and also they have promoted or uplifted the C, deputy CEO, uh, I don't know what name they have given him, I don't know, chief administrator or chief what, I, that, that is a name given anyway, I cannot recall. But then in addition to that, uh, they also inform us that their lawyer will be dealing I'm, a, I'm a, on their behalf because maybe they are going for campaign. Our line of communication to the council is to the admin arm. I don't write to the mayor directly. I can copy him in the letter for his information, but I write directly to the CEO or the deputy CEO as the case may be. And the, the, the letters addressed to the council were sent to the deputy CEO as the default head of the council. Then this particular request from the, from the commission, until he was invited for disciplinary hearing. And uh, after that disciplinary hearing, he was called back, and then the service commission took their last decision at the time to tell him that he did so hand over, I think on or before a particular Friday, um, uh, failure of which the disciplinary action will be taken. And this Friday came and passed. It coincided with uh, this Basire Council, the lawyer wrote. And funnily, I choose not to reply because this lawyer is not my co for our line of communication between me and council. I think the lawyer's place is the, at the court. You can take the matter to the court, I will come and answer, and we'll deal with the matter. But then to be writing administratively between me and the council, I see that I should not be entertaining that. And as such, the lawyer, knowing the provision that the council cannot pass a resolution, is stressing to me that the resolution still stands. Yeah, so while you are addressing the issue of... Um receiving correspondence from, from, the, from the lawyer of KMC. Can you please have a look at these two documents to advise yourself whether these are the, the letters you are referring to? The correspondence you've received from, from the lawyer? Yes. Yes, um, can you, you may advise us on the, 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 the re reference of those letters before we... Yeah, the f uh, one of it, which is dated 14th of April 2023, this was the last letter, if I could remember, yes. Uh, addressed to the Permanent Secretary, reference number 62, stroke KMC, stroke volume, uh, volume 2, stroke 42, stroke SLP. Uh, this is address the... the Heading is final instruction to hand over to the chief executive officer and warning for insubordination. So this was what we conveyed. The heading was what we conveyed yes. from the service commission. Uh, uh, and the second one as well? Yeah, the second one was the one which was previously sent, which was on the 28th of February 2023. 
and the reference is 62 stroke KMC stroke volume 2 stroke 40 stroke uh, SPL address to the permanent secretary request to hand over to the chief executive officer KMC yes um, honorable chair um, if it pleases the commission we may um, apply to tender this to letters received um, from um, the lawyer of KMC to the, um, address to the permanent secretary in evidence as an exhibit before we now dwell. Very well, counsel. Um, the letter dated 14th April 2023 um, with reference number 62 slash KMC slash volume 2 slash 42 slash SLP from Senghor Law Chambers is hereby admitted and marked as SLP 001. As the chair places. Now, um, can, can you please hold on? Let me admit the other thank, document. Thank um, the letter dated the 28th of uh, February 2023 um, with reference number 62, KMC, volume 2 slash 40 slash SLP from Senghor's Law Chambers um, is admitted in evidence and marked as SLP 002. As the commission places. Now, um, you've also, like, before you proceed with your evidence, you've also um, made mention of several correspondence um, since from the, the, the commission itself. Um, let us say they have written to, to um, the deputy CEO at the time. And also, you've also made mention or referred to certain letters being written to the commission um, by KMC as well and the instructions that you have written as well um, to, to the Deputy Chief Executive Officer in relation to handing over to the CEO, Senator Martins. Now, just for um, ease of process, we will, I will now show you these documents and you can identify them and so that we can tender them in, 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 in one bundle. Okay, thanks.
would be out. Yes, these are the, the letters. I just arranged them in accordance to their dates. Very well, thank you. Um, you may uh, hand over to the chairperson. Um, shall we apply to tender the letters in bundle as identified by the witness? It encompasses the correspondence between um, the, the Office of the PS, Local Governments and Land, um, the local, local Government Service Commission, and the KMC. and also the deputy CEO into evidence as an exhibit. Um, the letter dated um, the 12th of April 2023 with um, um, file number LM 35 stroke 131 stroke 01 stroke 1 stroke 5 um, in brackets 124 um, is hereby admitted and marked as um, local government um, LCG LCG 1 the letter dated 9th March 2023 with file reference number LM 35 stroke 131 stroke 01 Five in brackets 119, that is the folio number, is hereby admitted and marked as um, LCG 2. The, um, the letter dated the letter dated the 7th of March 2023 with reference number BEW18 stroke 119 stroke 01 stroke 11 from Carnifin Municipality is um, admitted and marked as KMC1. The um, letter dated the 8th of February 2023 
uh, from the Local Government Service Commission. Um, is admitted and marked as LGSC1. The um, letter dated the 6th February 2023 with reference number BEW119 stroke 201 stroke 1 stroke 51 from KMC is hereby admitted and marked as KMC2. The um, letter dated 2nd February 2023 from the Local Government Service Commission um, is hereby admitted and marked as LGSC2. And um, together this um, bundle of documents is marked as LCG20. Ask because the commission places. Now, um, in proceeding with your evidence, now when you had this series of correspondence from um, your institution to um, KMC and vice versa as well, was Senabu Martin at any time accepted, and did he did she resume office? Um, at, at the council as instructed? Uh, accepted. She was, she resumed office, I mean, because she was, um, uh, I think, can be forcefully installed in the office, if I can use that word. But accepted that one, um, uh, the council was not ready to work with her. Now, when you say forcefully installed, at the office, what do you mean? Yeah, because uh, when we were asked to inst um, uh, take Senab, Senabu was asked to go to her office, she went there several times and uh, she was blocked. And we realized that, you know, sanity must uh, uh, prevail. People have their rights. And this is somebody alleged, not proven guilty. And uh, just taking advantage of her and not allowing her to execute her duty is um, uh, after the court has given that they cannot stop her from accessing the office. So we, 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 we feel that um, uh, now this is becoming too, too much, that um, uh, she has to resume to her office. When she was escorted to the office with a view to get her access to the office, when they went to, up to the office, and uh, the, her office keys were requested. And what we were told this, we could not confirm that the office furniture were removed from the office. It was empty. The keys to the office were requested, and uh, people started saying, it's with so-and-so, it's with so-and-so, it's with so-and-so. And at that point, a, a carpenter service was um, uh, secured to open the door and then replace the key, and then uh, allow her um, access to the office. Now, um, perhaps we, we discuss the, the forceful installation, if I may use the word that, that you have used earlier. Um, in your opinion, was that the most appropriate measure to take at the time? Under the circumstances, yes. Why do you say that? Because all measures were taken and nothing was adhered to and uh, and uh, we don't do this in isolation we we we, we sought um, our advices um so basically who appoints the ceo the service commission who reshuffles the ceo the service commission so at the time senabu was forcefully installed at kmc the deputy ceo must have been kajali is that correct exactly um, now, if the, if the local um, government service commission decided to um, rotate or transfer Kajani, can, or could the service, um, the KMC, refuse the transfer at any time as per the 
act. No, they are not supposed to. So I'm coming back to your point that at the time, you are, your opinion was that the forceful installation was the best measure to have taken um, to be taken at the time. Exactly. So again, um, do you think or don't you think that if that is supposed to be the practice, uh, do you not think that it will cause more um, more chaos and possibly any form of civil unrest if if government decisions are supposed to be executed forcefully at, at, at any given time? It is subject to analysis. Administrative decisions. It is subject to analysis. This is a situation where the deputy CEO been instructed by the appointing body to hand over and refuse. <laughs> if we move that in the beginning, you have seen the letter from the, the mayor saying that they will not allow Kajali to move, and he has not moved. Now it comes to a point. You know, we have to measure impunity is in itself instability because somebody's right is in the fridge on so if we don't address that we are also exposing the system to a similar thing uh, uh, a similar allegation that it could lead to civil arrest when you because somebody's right remember there was a time that the people wanted to come to the street and install Zenabu. and then you must have heard that in the social media the calls for her to be installed forcefully, which was stopped. Um, uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, those people calling for that were advised that they, this is a lawful country and they should not take the law into their own hands. And Senabu was also asked to tell anybody who wants to do such on her behalf to, re to, to refrain from that. So, but then we also have a catch 22 situation here where somebody's right is being trampled on for almost one year this lady was sitting at the home at home the council is suffering she is not working the council is paying the salaries the person in the meantime signing checks is not the rightful person to be authorizing checks payments and authorizing transactions so now all this after being solved there is still resistance that the person should not be put in the office. To me, at some point, hard decisions have to be taken and uh, um, uh, consequences be faced. And to me, that, that, that could have been the most appropriate action. When you say somebody's right, what, whose right are, are you referring to here? The Senator Martin. And what are the rights that, that you think were in, 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 in question? Trade, that her right to be in her office, because she's just been alleged she has not been suspended rightfully. She has not been expelled. The court says she should go back to her office. She should go back to her office. Now, um, I think this is more of a non-adherence to rules and regulations and laws that have been laid down for the, 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 the effective administration of our governance structure than the rights of an individual. What I see here is, um, as you've highlighted in your statement, um, misunderstanding of, of um, roles or, or duties or boundary lines. So I, I'm not saying you're wrong or you're right. I just want to understand your opinion. But with respect to the rights of um, an individual, I don't think the Senator Martin and, um, how to call again, and KMC is actually an issue of right. It's more or less like an administrative issue, not adherence to the rules laid down, to the laws laid down. What do you think? You mean to say that suspending Senabu illegally is not infringing on her rights? No, I am not dwelling on the issue of the suspension of Senabu, whether it is lawful or not. We are trying to understand, like you have highlighted in, um, in your statement, you have clearly highlighted that there are clear misunderstandings uh, with respect to boundaries here and there, who should suspend who, who should discipline who, that uh, the, the council at some point um, took it up upon themselves to, to indefinitely suspend Senator Martins, and then you will see as well that um, you have told us that, that that is the rule of the commission. So that is not what we are talking about. We are in no way trying to um, 
trying to glorify the actions of any, any individual. But the process to be done, we are trying to see and outline what the best procedure would have been in addressing administrative issues. Now, I don't know whether you understand. So yeah, now the, I... the issue is when you said that you forcefully um, installed Senabo because hard rights were being violated, I think it is more of um, an issue of non-adherence to administrative policies and laws and regulations. The Local Government Act has outlined um, procedures to suspend someone and so on and so forth and how to go about it. The non-adherence is an infringement and it depends on the law that you don't adhere to what does that apply. If I'm supposed to receive my salary somebody did not give me my salary because he doesn't adhere to the law he has infringed on my rights. Equally Senabu is a senior public servant supposed to occupy her office. No clear case of uh, proof proven her wrong or committing a crime. And there are redress mechanisms that can be followed to hold her either liable or unliable. So refusing her, her office is infringing on her rights. Very well. Now, when you find out as an oversight institution that a particular council is exercising its powers um, ultra-virus, that um, exercising powers that they don't have, um, and in fact, you, when you highlight that those actions are of a grave nature, what does the law say that you, should, you can do? If the minister yes. considered a particular offense grave in nature, he can set up a commission of inquiry. Was that issue, um, in your opinion, a matter of grave concern for the, for, for the minister to address when you, have, when you feel you have a, a council that does not want to obey or does not, does not want to follow regulation or laws laid down? Yes. So again, it means that the Act has provided for um, a recourse, is it not? Yes. Yes. So um, in agreement with, with me with respect to that recourse, don't you think there are more um, efficient um, um, administrative measures to be taken, which have already been provided for by, by, by law? Yes, those are, are, are redress mechanisms where the ones initially are followed by the ministry. And uh, this redress mechanism, any time attempted, is challenged. One of which is the administrative one, false administrative means. Now, drop, rescind the unlawful decision and then go through the right process that was resisted. The second one, after receiving two different complaints and also uh, uh, um, uh, an inspection report, the minister considering that the matter at hand is grave in nature, constituted a commission of inquiry. And equally, that commission of inquiry was taken to court. And uh, these are all processes that got frustrated. And uh, there has to be a way out and somebody's right have to be given now um honorable peers see um this is where sometimes i disagree with you a bit and i am not sure whether you understand my position i have no problem for example if if i am being suspended and i feel like i've been suspended from work unlawfully you understand um it's one thing to say that my rights have been violated it's an, it's an individual right but what we are looking at here, it's a bigger picture. The right of the people, that is the government, to have its laws being enforced is a bigger right than the right of an individual. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I get so I, I am worried that we will have a structure in this country wherein um, certain laws cannot be enforced. So that's why I'm trying to understand your position um, of course, the, the Commission will as well perhaps ha have questions to, to see how best laws are going to be um, enforced 
the enforceability of laws. It is was those rights outweigh the individual interest. If my rights have been are violated, I may go to court, or I may go and sleep, or I may decide to say, don't worry about it. But if the country is not effectively governed by laws that we ourselves put in place, don't you think it's more of a um, bigger concern than the individual right? That's true. And that is the more reason that the state has to be concerned where laws are blatantly um, ignored. And uh, instructions to even um, uh, individuals who accept decision of bodies that put them in place, like the deputy CEO. He accepted a decision of the service commission to appoint him. And that is why he is in the position. And equally, he decided to ignore the decision of the same body to advise him to do an action. So a continuation, you can see from the beginning, the matter is getting a momentum. And it has to close somewhere. And that process, I don't know whether it's just like when people are killed, you use firing squad, you use um, a lethal injection, you use um, a electric chair in some countries to redress an issue. People might say it's inhuman, but that's a redress mechanism. And, and, and these are things that we need to know, that these are issues or redress mechanisms that has to be put in place to bring sanity. It's not meant to be hunt anybody. But you cannot also leave people to flout rules and go scot-free. And those continuously challenge the law openly. Right. And then now nobody can act. And now that will be repeated by others. And that will become a system. And that system, as you rightly say, will pose a serious challenge or a serious security issue in the country. I agree entirely. I agree entirely um, with, with, with your position as well. And um, so now, now I have two, quick, two um, issues to discuss, just two questions to, to put to you. Um, even though I must clearly say that I am of the opinion that using force in administrative decision, unless you have um, generally um, court orders here and there, but there are more administrative recourse that can be, that can be um, employed in relation to having um, your position um, being enforced. For example, my, my, and let me ask my two last questions. Um, if the, the commission, the service commission is to um, either suspend the, the deputy CEO for non-adherence non or terminate his service or whatsoever or take any, any um, decision that would render him not to lawfully occupy that position again, do you think that he will continue to work there as a deputy CEO? Considering the trend. No, not, 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 not the trend. No, if, I have to make a decision okay. based on something. All right. Considering the resistance of the deputy CEO, I will not see him move even if he is dismissed. So you are saying he can continue to be the deputy CEO even though he is dismissed? I, that's what I believe in because he has demonstrated that after I've been caution and, and uh, given last result, given all advices, he still sit down and refused to take the advice of the appointing body. So I don't see a point where his dismissal, he will adhere to it. Um, uh, um, I don't see it. He might do it, but I don't see it, considering what passed. Uh, uh, yes, this may be a very much direct question. If, if a, a permanent secretary is dismissed, can they still continue to say they will occupy the, 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 the office? If the public secretary is dismissed? Yes. Can, can they forcefully say that they will continue to um, occupy the office? No. Very well. Now, lastly, what do you think should be in place in relation to enforcement mechanism? Um, um, when you have, uh, when um, 
rulings or decisions of the Commission of, of the Local Government Service Commission are being made. Um, what do you think in your, um, in your um, experience as PS um, in this area should be incorporated if it is not there in relation to having an effective mechanism because you want to avoid situations like um, what just transpired in relation to having um, forceful installation here and there back and forth. We need to have effective mechanisms to make sure laws are being adhered to generally. Yeah, I think we need to look into our laws uh, and the policies to put provisions, um, uh, some of the provisions that um, uh, will address some of this problem. I think uh, as of now we are, it's an uh, opportune moment that we are reviewing the Local Government Act. Uh, it has gone through the process of, of uh, the regional consultation, local consultation and regional consultation. And there is going to be national consultation and validation of the act, which we are planning after the coming into force of the new council to continue the process. This is an opportune moment to look at the gaps and then fill them. So that um, uh, um, uh, serious actions are taken where gray areas are, we can try to adjust to make sure that the law, when not enforced, there are clear cut um, uh, um, uh, punishments or redress mechanisms, clear cut spell out um, uh, in the laws to address some of these things. I think this is an opportune moment for us to uh, um, uh, input some of those things in the acts, in the policy documents. Thank you very much, um, Honorable PS. Thank you very much, um, Chairperson and Lead Council. I hand over the, the witness. Um, I just had a question. Um, you had spoken earlier about the complaints made against Sainabu Martin, and yes. you had also said that there was a counterclaim from Sainabu Martin. Yes. But I do not recall that you gave us um, evidence or you told us what the counterclaim from Sainabu Martin was. Yeah, I made mention of a few of them. That is he talked about the contract um, uh, regarding the uh, Mali the, project the, mm -hmm. as well as the the pavement issues and uh, if I could recall uh, there were other issues as well um, uh, that is uh, regarding salary advance to councillors it also revealed um, uh, uh, deduction from 186 staff uh, and also uh, the issue of alleged bribery to the deputy mayor staff appointments from 2022 where there were staff appointments that were not following the due process these were um, uh, at the unilaterally stoppage of um, uh, deduction there were issues that we are related to some of the deductions on people's loan or were unilaterally stopped as a favor to them. This we could not substantiate. We, 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 we subjected to um, uh, uh, inspection report. That, those were the things we added to the uh, claim made by the mayor so that the inspectors will be able to look into all those and then um, uh, inform the, the, the minister, advise the minister accordingly. Okay, so the investigations into all these issues are ongoing? The, the, the inspection report was done, even though um, uh, it does not capture all the issues, that is also another issue, um, uh, but then maybe, I don't know whether you uh, avail the inspection report? No, okay. that would have been my next point, to ask you if we can... Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, the, the inspection report. Yes. Yes, I can, I, can, I can provide that as well. Can you tell us how soon we'll be able to get a copy of the inspection report as well as the other documents that you have been requested to provide to the Commission? Can you come again? Can you give us an indication 
of how soon the Commission can get the inspection report and the other documents that you have been requested to provide? Yes, yeah, some of them I have um, uh, already gathered them. Okay. Um, uh, today I assigned somebody to extract them and they brought them for me. I just have to verify. And then I will add this um, uh, inspection report when I go to the office tomorrow. I don't know whether it's in one of the files you have. You have not come across it? No. Yeah, because it was done the same time of this particular engagement. I'm surprised that it's not in that file. But then we will find out from the, from the office. And Thank you. if all is set, I'll drive to bring them tomorrow. Thank you very much. Um, that is all I have for the witness for now. Madam Chair, in case you have questions. Um, thank you, um, Council. Um, I would use this opportunity on behalf of the Commissioners um, to thank um, Mr. Hubasanyang, the PS, Ministry of Lands, for giving us an insight into um, the role of the ministry vis-a-vis -vis the governance of the councils. And um, at this point, I would wish to state that um, um, we have, um, we had earlier scheduled to continue with you, but uh, given the fact that um, tomorrow is the burial for the former Honorable Minister of Agriculture, O.J. Jalo, we are not sitting tomorrow. And um, we had already scheduled another person, another witness, for Thursday. So we may not have you, but um, we would um, recall you as and when we receive all the documentation that we have asked you to bring. And I believe that we have um, further issues with respect to the Local Government Act vis-a-vis -vis the functions and activities of the, the councils and your responsibility and role in ensuring that you assist them in implementing these rules. Uh, if you recollect, the lead council did dwell on section 49, if I am correct, um, on the devolution of uh, functions from the central government to councils. And this, I believe, extensively has been dealt with in the Act. And the modus operandi as to how this should happen is also provided for in the Act. And your role also, what you should do as government, is also provided for in the Act. And we will want to further question you on some of these things and the way forward and what you have done and what the challenges are so that we will have a comprehensive understanding of what has been the major issues with respect to councils performing their functions as expected and also in pursuant to what is given to them by the Act. So we would, I would once more use this opportunity to thank you and to indicate that uh, we will call you when we, 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 we think it's necessary. And um, we, at this point, we would rise and close for the day. And we will resume sitting on Thursday, inshallah, at uh, 10 o'clock uh, with the next witness. Yes, the Secretariat, just to, I'm just being informed by my fellow commissioners, that the Secretariat would be at work. Um, the, um, the commissioners sought for us to adjourn tomorrow because they want to attend the funeral but the Secretariat will be at work tomorrow. Um, thank you so much for your attention. We can now rise. Rise.